This is the award-winning Lee Pitts Live. This portion of Lee Pitts Live is brought to you by Hodges University, celebrating 25 years of educating Southwest Florida. Southwest Florida, you are looking live at the Martin Luther King Day celebration. We are Johnny on the spot. We, that's Lee Pitts Live, that is. And we're right here in Centennial Park with two of our community leaders who have changed Fort Myers for the better and continue to make it a wonderful place to live. Right behind us is a wonderful river. I don't want to get it wrong. It's Kalucha Hatchie. You got Kalucha. it. Yes, sir. We have Councilman Banks right here. And, of course, Pastor Glover of Mount Hermon Christian Church. So without further ado, gentlemen, welcome to Leap is Live. Well, Thank you, Lee. I'm going to make you guys be a little more casual this time. Bump me in the middle. Yep. Bump me in the middle. <laughs> come on. Come on. Get you some soul. Get you some soul. Uh, I think it's just a beautiful sight, first of all, to be out here at this event, uh, Councilman. And when I first called you up, I said, I want to interview you on Martin Luther King Day because uh, it's such a special day. And you were so excited about it. When you think about Dr. King and how it ties into our community, his mission, what, what comes to mind, Councilman? The thing that comes to mind is uh, Dr. King swung easy, but he hit hard. And, and he made changes that needed to be changed. A lot of people didn't want those changes, but he stuck himself out there. He was not afraid of anything, and he he made tremendous movements in, in, in the entire uh, citizenship of the United States. Pastor Glover, from a clergy perspective, you guys look up to Dr. King, don't you? He was a clergyman and a community activist. Is that a, a dicey line to travel, and he put himself out there? Well, I, he put himself out there in the tradition of uh, Old Testament prophets and even the ministry of Jesus Christ. Uh, Micah said he has, he has told you what is good, to do justice, to love mercy, and to, war, and to walk peacefully with God. So Dr. King understood that justice ministry was a part of the work of God because public policy influenced people's lives. So when you can affect public policy and make it just, that's a righteous thing to do. Okay. Now, uh, in your household growing up, uh, Councilman, was Dr. King talked, well, you might be in his generation almost, right? King was a little younger than you? No, little, the, you're a little younger Doc, than King? Dr. King's movement was when I was in my 20s. Okay. And I'm ashamed to tell you, I, I came from a bigoted Central Florida County. Uh, we were awful. We didn't know better. We were awful. And it took me a good part of my earlier life to realize how important Dr. King was to all of us being here in a in a he could have done that in a militant fashion we'd had the biggest mess in this country forever and and he didn't do it that way now when you look at the progress for the city of Fort Myers and how it's such a diverse city particularly with East Fort Myers and then you got the McGregor area over here and people are all coming together in this one park how does that make you feel as a city councilman in terms of progress I like it. Uh, what really hurts is every night I go to thinking, I'm thinking about what can we do about black on black crime. I think about that every night. I say in my prayers, help me figure out. And the other night I figure we need another Dr. King to come and handle that situation. I'll let, I'll let Pastor Glover <laughs> speak to that. He said he's, he's still concerned about black on black crime and we need Dr. King to come and handle that. You are a Dr. King. I know it. Figuratively speaking, tell us some things that are happening to bring the community together and reduce crime. Well, uh, crime is not an isolated issue. It's tied no. to other things that ill our society. And one of the uh, primary contributors uh, to people turning to crime uh, in a desperate situation is the barriers to employment. Uh, so I think one strategy is to begin to remove those barriers uh, to employment. And when people are employed, uh, they will work. Uh, when people can't get employment, then they make bad decisions. And I want to commend the city of Fort Myers, Mayor Henderson, and the city council uh, following the lead of a group of congregations. Uh, they recently passed a resolution to ban the felony box uh, from all of their applications, which was a question that right. discriminated against right. people who are returning to society, who've done their time, who committed felony offense. That box, in effect, prevented them from being interviewed for jobs they would otherwise be qualified for. So we had, uh, uh, we had conversations with the mayor, the council, over the course of 13 months, and that resulted in them removing that box from uh, their applications. And the city has made um, a decision to be a fair chance hiring city. 
Only right. the fifth city in the state of Florida to do that. So that was a very progressive decision. How did you vote on that and, and, and I, add something to what he said? I, I was one of uh, Councilman uh, Watson, before she came on council, was promoting that. Before she got there, I said, we're going to do this, guys. We're going we're gonna to get her started when she gets here. And then she cleaned it up, got it done when she got in. And uh, so I voted yes. I voted yes on day, day <laughs> 10 before zero. When we talk about the redevelopment, and uh, tell us about some of the things that are hot on the city council's table right now in terms of revitalization of our community. What are some projects you guys are looking at right now? Well, the greatest uh, project downtown is that hotel down there that's getting cleaned out and gutted. Uh, that thing's been an albatross for the longest time. The old time. Sheraton. The old Sheraton. Well, I guess what a mess. Guys doing it, and great thing about it, it's not cost us anything. Uh, the new hotel, that's going to happen whenever it happens. And then we're sort of done, and I and I, I want to see us reach out to the entire town and start figuring out the things we're going to do. Uh, we, we're thinking about a program. Uh, in High Point, North Carolina, they had a terrible capital crime problem. And, and we have looked into a, pro, a situation where uh, their deal was to clean up the street corner. If you stop the money on the street corner, you can stop the money from flowing to the big guys. And you stop it long enough, they'll leave. And, 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 you, and the community got behind that. They cut their ca capital crime 66% doing that. So that's the thing this year that I'm thinking that I want to see happen. Okay, we're going to be watching that very closely. Now, the... There was a time when black people couldn't even come downtown Fort Myers, I, I understand. I see more all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I see you here today. <laughs> see, politicians, bro. I got them both. <laughs> but but I, I said that to say that when you see all these black people downtown right now in, in, in the city of Fort Myers, I would get both of you to speak to how does it make you feel in terms of unity? He, I've been there a lot of times. Tell us how that make you feel. Don't you feel good? I love it. All right. I mean, I, the, the more but, the better. This, uh, Hall. this, Hall. Right, this multicultural ahead. king event really should be reflective of uh, everyday life in the city. Uh, not just for commemorative events, but uh, everyday in a uh, business, uh, social, economic life. So that's where the real test is. Not uh, when we can turn out for something like this, but where is the participation in the economy? Where is the participation uh, in, in the society that reflects the type of diversity uh, that we have today? And that's how we really measure the gains. It is the participation of people uh, in, in the economy, uh, in the marketplace. What specifically is Mount Hermon Ministry doing today? I see your shirt. Move your mic so we can get that on TV. Uh, redeeming our influence. Having a redeeming influence. Uh, that is that is our new brand, our new message to our community. That Mount Hermon Church simply doesn't want to be a church in the community, but we want our effect on the community to have a redeeming influence, a restorative influence, a renewing influence. So we've made the commitment not only to minister to the spiritual needs of our community, but to identify the social needs and uh, to use our resources and our influence to address those social needs, uh, even in the realm of uh, politics. Uh, a lot of religious people believe that politics is a domain where religious people should not go. But I would challenge them, again, to read the ministry of the Old Testament prophets, read the ministry of Jesus, and you'll see that Jesus and the prophets frequently engaged people of power on social issues, from employment uh, to immigration to wages uh, to hiring practices. Uh, all of those things are addressed in Scripture and are part of the gospel message. So we've embraced that. We want to help usher in an era where the church is not only about having church inside the walls, but working to improve the lives of people outside the walls. Excellent. That's what this means to us. That's excellent. Councilman Banks, Councilman Banks, Southwest Florida as a governing body, Fort Myers City Council, very diverse, African American, Hispanics, and whites compared to a lot of other governing bodies, whether it be the school board, the uh, county commission, call your county commissions, and all these different, we're the most diverse. What does that say about our city? It says everything about it. It is our city. And not only that, buddy, we get along great. Uh, uh, I don't know Councilman Watson so well, but I'm getting to know her. I, I certainly know Johnny. Uh, I think the world of Teresa Watkins Brown, I think she's one of the five best women I ever met in my life. And we get along.
uh, Pastor Glover, when you go into the, the council halls and you stand there before the council to deliberate on issues and you see people up there on that council who look like you, what does that do for you in terms of your motivation? I think it's uh, strategic and I think it's important uh, to have uh, diversity on the council that reflects the community. And uh, the council people who are African American descent, I'm very proud to have them there. And I'm very proud of the work that they are doing to help advance the causes of the city overall and also those who are marginalized and who live in those pockets of poverty. Uh, so I like what uh, uh, Councilman Banks just said in reference to uh, the council working together to improve the quality of life of all of the city because we're one large community what happens in one part of the city affects what happens in the other none of us are an island unto ourselves the issues that that happen in one part of the community affects the whole city so we want to move in a way to pull the city together to address all of the systemic issues uh, that would make it a less desirable place for people to live great Councilman Bank, final comment. Yes, you were about to mention McCullen Hall. Go ahead and elaborate on McCullen Hall, located on Martin Luther King Boulevard. We're getting there. We spent a lot on it. Uh, we all want to see it done. I read a book last night, and, and it was talking about African Americans in World War II, which not, was not a pretty picture. But it had a picture. It said McCullum Hall. McCullum Hall was the USO Center for African American Officers and Enlisted Men at Pagefield and Buckingham uh, really? Airport. And I really didn't know that. It's just more. Outstanding. More. Well, folk, that's the kind of information you get on Leap His Live. Thanks. Uh, Pastor Wick, uh, William Glover. <laughs> Good to get both of you here on Martin Luther King Day celebration. Thank Thanks you, for joining. Uh, Lee. Good to be here. <laughs> we'll be right back.